Gunner, front right here. Yeah. Obviously, it's been a while since we've seen you in the octagon. So, where have you been the last several months, and how's life been in camp and everything? Um. Yeah. Mostly back home. Been on a uh, little trips here and there. Went uh, went golfing in, uh, in Barcelona. That was nice. But uh, other than that, just been home training. You know, not much different. Spending time with the kids, the family. And obviously, you were supposed to fight Daniel Rodriguez. Now you're fighting Brian Barbaran. So uh, when Daniel fell out and they came to you with Brian, did you like this matchup more? Were you excited to fight Daniel Rodriguez or did it matter? Yeah, I, I didn't really mind too much, you know. Um, there's, It was nice of them to bring in another southpaw. So I, I like that. Um, like, I'm well used to opponents being changed. And I think more often than not, it's happened so I don't really get too engaged with my first opponent, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I was happy. I mean, uh, Bam Bam is a stud. He's a veteran, and, and I'm really happy that he stepped up. So when they initially came to you with Daniel Rodriguez, did you expect, like, not because of him, just because of your past history with opponents falling out, did you expect something was going to happen? Yeah, sort of. I always do. To be honest, I, I mean, I, I, I look at his fights and I study him, but I don't really focus too much on my opponents that, you know, like that, because I know it's going to change and uh, or it usually does. Yeah. So at, at what point in camp can you finally settle in and be like, OK, I am actually going to fight this guy? Well, no, I, I just settle in and I think I'm. Um, actually going to fight so i'll be there and and whoever is going to be there on the other side of the cage and that's fine as long as there's someone <laughs> obviously brian barbaran you said he's a stud he has a lot of you know fight of the night performance of the night bonuses he's very durable he's been around yeah. for a while so what do you make of him as an opponent when you finally locked in on brian yeah he's exciting um, um i like i like his fights you know he, he goes in there and he, he He's not, he's not going to try to win on points, you know. He's going to try to finish a fight, and he, he, it's exciting to watch him fight, and I'm excited to share the octagon with him. And final one for me, uh, what are your thoughts on the main event between Kamaru and Leon? How do you see that fight playing out? Yeah, that's an exciting one. Um, I think Leon is going to look a lot better than he did last time. I think... Uh, uh, the altitude probably affected him. I didn't feel like he looked that great on his feet. I feel like he was slow and like he was a bit, I don't know if it was timid to throw or, or just like saving his energy and stuff. He didn't look like himself on the feet. Definitely not. So I think we're going to see a lot better Leon this time around and I think he's going to win. Gonna just over here. You fought Leon Edwards in London back in 2019. What's mm -hmm. that like witnessing his journey to, to now holding the title? Leon is a nice guy. I like him and we get along well. Uh, obviously, we uh, the match didn't go my way with Leon, but um, it was a close one. And, and yeah, I mean, I wish Leon all the best. And for you in your fight this, this Saturday, how do you see the fight going down? My fight or? Your fight, yeah. Um, I always go in there to finish my fights, and so does he. So I don't think this one is going to the judges, and I'm going to try to finish him early if possible. If not, then we'll do it second, third round. We'll see. And London is kind of like your your home. You've, you've fought here so many times before. Does this fight week feel any different? Obviously, it's pay-per-view the first time that... London has had had a pay-per-view. Does it feel any different for you? Uh, not really. Not yet, anyway. Uh, we'll see when we get a little bit closer. But no, it's very homey. It's like the same hotel, the same people, same faces. It's, yeah, I like it. Thank you. Gunnar, speaking of London, how did it feel to get back in the wing column after back-to-back -back losses last year? Yeah, it felt great. It's always good to, to come back and, uh, and be able to, to win and, and kind of get that feeling again, you know. Um, 
had a two tough fights before and and both decision losses and and you know it's not nice coming in with two losses behind you so it's it feels a lot better now did you make any adjustments after that fight to your training camp in general or to your training uh, routine after the last fight or after the yes yes after the victory um yeah i mean we're always always getting better and i feel like the last couple of camps have been great like really good compared to the camps in the past and also a big factor is that i've been injury free now for some time uh, after my last fight i had the nose surgery that i had to go through but that was something that i knew i had to do eventually and it just like completely closed off um in the fight in the last fight uh against sato so i had to do that and so that was a little bit of time off but not too bad thank you good luck Connor, a few more in front uh what do you make of connor's new matchup with michael chandler uh how do you think that fight's gonna play out yeah it's an interesting one uh if if connor trains properly and is in shape he'll kick the shit out of him <laughs> have you have you spoken or trained with Connor much lately? Um, we speak, yeah, we speak every now and then. Uh, uh, not too much, but just like Instagram and stuff. And yeah, you know, he's he's doing Connor stuff. Michael Michael at he did a he was a guest fighter at the last pay per view. And he said Connor even thought about having this fight at one eighty five. So uh, what do you make of him possibly fighting? He's looking big. He's looking very big. So I wouldn't be surprised. We'll see. We'll see. Going down here. A few years ago, yeah, Molnir and Jim used to do like funny music videos like towards the end of the year. What's happened to those? Yeah, I don't know. We were meant to do uh, one the what was it last year or something that we had planned or two years? These these COVID years just like fucked everything up, didn't they? Uh, like, I don't even know when the last... Well, I, I know there's one that we've planned and we scheduled and we haven't done yet. And uh, so there, there should be one coming up soon-ish. What's the song? I can't tell you that. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Good day. Uh, yeah. You've been playing golf a lot over the last couple of years in COVID. Oh, yes. What's your handicap right now and <laughs> how does it mix with, with your MMA game? Um, so this, last year was my first summer and I got down to 15 handicap, uh, which is not bad. And uh, golf is hard though. Like it is super, super hard. It's in many ways a lot harder than MMA. It's like you 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 can be so great and then the next thing next fucking shot you're the worst player in the world. It's yeah, it's tough. It's tough and it, it's mental as well, super mental because you you will go mental if you, if you don't keep it together, you know. As you trained in uh, in Dublin for this fight for a couple of weeks with right. uh, Jaroslav Amosov, the mm -hmm. Bellator champion, what was it like uh, training with him? It was great. He, he's a great guy. Um, he, he doesn't speak much English, so it was a little bit hard to connect in some ways, but still we managed and we trained a good bit together. Uh, he's a phenomenal wrestler and great like training vibe great to train with great training partner and obviously super super good so it was awesome any other questions cool. Thanks, thank you